next. I just wanted to, to uh, I, I looked at all the bills, and, and we'll go over them a little bit individually, but um, in the plan, food and agriculture, we hoped for an agricultural renaissance in Hawaii. And the guiding principles were food security is the primary goal, entrepreneurial farming and jobs, preserving and advancing rural communities, sustaining natural resources, agricultural innovation, and dialogue, planning, and shared commitment. That's what these bills represent here today, particularly the dialogue, particularly the planning, and particularly the shared commitment. Scott? Yeah. The governor called out in his New Day plan of support for agriculture, and what we have here is a collection of bills that does just that. You know, the governor wanted the Department of Agriculture to be there for the different commodity groups and for the agricultural community. So when our coffee industry had a problem with coffee berry borer, working with our friends in the legislature, our partners, we came up with a, a bill to start the funding for research and for implementation to take care of the coffee berry borer. The macnut industry, which is one of our foundational pieces, needed help with the felted coccyx. We have a bill here that will help us with research and going forward to take care of that problem. We have the, the first time the federal government's moving forward with FISMA, the Food Safety Modernization Act. And with that, we'll need to support our agricultural industry with infrastructure. And we've got a bill here for special purpose revenue bonds that will allow us in the future to move forward on that issue. We've got a collection of bills that moves agriculture forward today, and I'm pleased to be here with the governor to sign it. Thanks, Scott. Great work. Okay. Um, we should get on with the signing. Um, and uh, I think I'll just try, I'll try to take them in order here, uh, but if it's okay with you, I'd like the, all the legislators that helped to pass it to come up, because rather than try and pick one bill and Everybody, but why don't you come up? Because I hope you agree, this is a group effort that got this done, and these bills come as a group, right? Even though we may be signing them individually. So why don't you folks come up for the signing, and then when it's done, we'll take pictures, holy pictures, with everybody, okay? Group, singly, however you want to do it, all right? Because uh, we want to mark this occasion. Okay, here we go. Very good. Okay, let me see if I can put this in order. Uh, okay, as Scott mentioned, uh, a, a House Bill 37, this is a special pur a purpose revenue bonds. This assists a agricultural enterprises. Um, uh, of course, we want to emphasize on this that we're going to have to have our constitutional amendment pass. And uh, uh, I, I, I certainly can't speak for the legislators, but I think I can speak with the legislators to say that this constitutional amendment is there for a very serious purpose. And that is that if we truly want to make the transition from the mono agriculture that we had before, with the emphasis on, on plantation uh, sugar and, and pineapple, and move to uh, entrepreneurial agriculture for the 21st century, which can include pineapple, for example, on, uh, on Maui. Uh, and uh, uh, we want to sustain that, then we need to have the, the constitutional amendment passed. Um, uh, and I hope that the message will come out for, uh, for today, that that's not just there for pro forma purposes. That's there because we need to have it in order to modernize and update our constitutional capacity to be able to have, uh, support 21st century agriculture on all the islands. So that's Bill 737, which I am going to look around and see if I can find here. <laughs> Where are we? Sorry, I didn't know you were going to do it this way. Ah, here we are. Okay. No, no. Very good. Let me just get these over here. Okay. Okay, HB 737 relating to special purpose revenue bonds to assist agricultural enterprises. Done. Now we're going to do 1514, House Bill 1514. 
This is uh, 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 one of the invasive species uh, uh, enemies that we have uh, in the islands. Uh, now that we've got our egg inspectors back, now that we're, we're uh, filling positions and, and, and getting research programs underway, this particularly will uh, give a, a, a good boost, a financial boost, to create a, a, a program uh, for uh, the, the, uh, to combat the, the coffee berry borer. Uh, and uh, uh, the infestation of coffee crops in, in, uh, in various regions, particularly on the neighbor islands, is something that the legislature finds, and I'm, I'm sure we all agree, that uh, finds we need to control. And, we find, and the legislature finds that it's critical and the state must take immediate action to support these efforts. And with this bill and the money associated with this bill, we'll be able to do exactly that. That one's done. <laughs> Next, 1618. Isn't this fun to put this all together? It's great. 1618. Um, now uh, a composition of the Board and Land and, and uh, land and Natural Resources, we want to put our, our personnel, we want to put our policy people into the 21st century uh, uh, as well. Uh, this uh, board member will have to have expertise in Native Hawaiian traditional customary practices and have a, a background uh, 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 in uh, conservation and natural resources. We want to have uh, uh, people on the board who, uh, in the composition of the board, uh, where we, we know that they're going to have the values and the priorities that come from those values, uh, the values of Hawaii and the priori priorities that come from them uh, uh, on the board and, and serving in terms of policy making. One's done. Uh, this is one, uh, this next one, um, uh, 1716, uh, uh, an appropriation on species prevention, control, outreach, research, uh, and planning. If, if you go back to the, uh, 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 the state of the state uh, back in January, I mentioned uh, in, in that that the legislature, as part of its legislative package, uh, had uh, uh, several million dollars in there in recognition of the fact that that uh, the, the invasive species uh, crisis was one that had to be met, and this was something you had to put money towards. Sometimes you say, well, you can't throw money at something, that won't solve it. This is one of the occasions, invasive species, where we need money, we need personnel, we need research, we need commitment, and uh, the administration and, and the legislature are, are as one with this, and this appro appropriates $5 million uh, for that, uh, for that uh, purpose. Done. Next, uh, this uh, is an appropriation also in the amount of $360,000 to the Department of Agriculture to work with the, the College of Tropical Agriculture and, uh, and Human Resources uh, for uh, to, uh, uh, prevention, develop methods and, and prevention and treatment of, of, and this with our macadamia industry. This is the, the felted cossid. Would anybody like to come up and say felted cossid five times very quickly with me? Uh, um, felted cossids all around the state are trembling as I get ready to sign this, uh, this, this bill because we're, we're coming after them right now. You know, it is, it's, it is amusing in one sense, it's a felted cossid. And who ever heard of it? Who knew, right? I mean, how do these names come about? Uh, and all that, but our whole macadamia nut industry is 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 at risk if we don't address it, if we don't get to it. And so, again, that's why I, I'm really pleased to be here doing this because this is a great cooperative effort. We recognize that we have to come to grips with this right now, and uh, 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 this appropriation is going to enable uh, that kind of, uh, uh, the the College of Tropical Egg and 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 the Egg Department to move right away on, uh, on uh, chasing those felded cossids right out of our lives. That one's done. <laughs> Terrific. Now we're down uh, to the last one. 
And uh, yeah, I know you think you're inches from a clean getaway uh, on this one, but we have a proclamation after that. Uh, I want to draw it all together in, in kind of a symbolic way, too, uh, at the end. Um, this one is the tax credits. This clarifies language relating to qualified uh, agricultural cost tax credit. If we really are serious, again, about entrepreneurial agriculture, we have to make sure these tax credits and these incentives are actually working the way we want them to. And so, uh, again, I'm very, very grateful because I think this, this helps uh, enormously in making sure that the uh, credit uh, will be deductible from the net income tax liability uh, in relation to the qualified agricultural uh, lands and, and, and the tax credits associated with it. We don't want to have uh, uh, any uh, pilakia come up afterwards as to whether uh, the assignment of the tax credits was appropriate or not. So heading off that possibility, I think, is what this is all about, and it's going to be very valuable as a result. There, the package is complete. So, oh, um, I want to uh, maybe we can do the combination of the of the uh, of the bills and the proclamation right now. I said I wanted to do something a little bit symbolic, and uh, I, I feel almost as if I should take that word back because it it almost seems as if it, it seems a bit abstract that it's symbolic. But what I, it, the more correct word would be representational, uh, representational of what. The Department of Ag has been doing representational of what uh, those in the legislature who have been pursuing 21st century agriculture are doing is what we've been doing in our apiary program. The apiary program has to do with bees. And I think uh, even the, the general public understands that there has been a very, very serious issue worldwide, really, with whether or not that we can have healthy bee populations and what that means for pollination, what that means for food supply what that means in terms of, of uh, uh, sustainability uh, for, for the race, not just for Hawaii, but for the, for the whole human race and the, and the interconnection and integration of, of bees and pollination uh, at the very foundation of our food chain and, and supply. And we've been extraordinarily fortunate uh, as, as we were uh, very, very wary uh, and leery uh, about what might be happening with our bee population to have Danielle Downey uh, come in and take uh, the uh, charge of the a uh, apiary program. And I know she, this is terrible, but I can't resist it. Um, she is our queen bee in terms of, <laughs> I know it's so bad, I'm, uh, but, uh, okay, right, I couldn't resist. And uh, I'm not the only one uh, who wouldn't do it, but uh, uh, people feel that way about her. Uh, uh, if, if anybody has inspired confidence, if, any, uh, if I've ever had, uh, uh, people saying, boy, what a, what, what a great person to come into any uh, department, it's her, because the people who know, the people who do the work, the people who are involved uh, every day, uh, professionally in terms of their life's commitment uh, in, in the bee industry, um, understand how important she is. So, can she come up and join us as well? I'm much more of a worker than a queen. Okay. All right. This is, yeah, this is the chief worker bee right here. Um, this is a, a proclamation uh, presented in recognition of Hawaii Pollinator Week. And uh, as I've indicated in, uh, in my general remarks and, and uh, designate a little more specifically here, the first pollinator, pollinator week was designated by the United States Senate and the U.S. Department of Agriculture in June of 2007. I, I wanted to, to cite that to you in, in, in particular because it's not that long ago that we began to understand that we had a real challenge here. I think we've, I'm no different than anybody else. Bees, hey, that's terrific. Um, some of you know that I had bees in my, my front yard. We, we raised bees and got honey and you know, it, it, was, it was a front yard activity. I had one of the biggest beehives, you know, in the, in the state in a, my Christmas berry tree uh, right outside my door. Uh, it got so big it finally fell. It, it, was, it was wonderful, to, but it was, it's amateur night. You know, that's the way we were looking at it. So it's only 2007. That's why this is so important. Uh, promoted annually as the Pollinator Partnership to address the urgent issues of declining pollinator populations. Uh, so this has become international. 
uh, in terms of understanding the ecosystem uh, provided by bees, birds, butterflies, bats, beetles, the whole combination in nature uh, that enables us to take uh, for granted uh, uh, the, uh, the, the system uh, of distribution, if you will, uh, initiated by bees. So this uh, Pollinator Week raise, uh, raises awareness of the vital role pollination plays in the health of our national, national forests and, of course, uh, in Hawaii. Uh, forage, fishing, wildlife, timber, water, mineral resources are all connected uh, as a result of, of the pollination we've taken for granted up to this point. So this is a very significant environmental benefit that the pollinator species are providing for us in maintaining healthy and diverse ecosystems. Therefore, it's with a great deal of pleasure, uh, Danielle, that I proclaim uh, June 16th through the 22nd as Pollinator Week in Hawaii and ask all the citizens of the Aloha State to join all of us in recognizing and paying tribute to the important role pollinators play in our efforts to promote long-term agricultural sustainability. Thank you very much. Well, um, it's with great pleasure that I accept this. This is the third, the third year of Hawaii's participation in Pollinator Week. And as the governor said, we know that pollinators worldwide are declining, and we don't know why. In many cases, there's still a lot of mysteries. But in some ways, the good news is in Hawaii, we know why we're losing our bees. We've recently gotten some pests that have been moving around the world, including the varroa mite and the small hive beetle. And these are combat combatable, manageable problems. And so the apiary program has been working to educate beekeepers throughout the state, teach them how to recognize these problems, teach them how to prevent the spread of these problems, and learn to manage bees. So unfortunately, many of the feral bees, like in your yard, have been lost. And now we rely more than ever on the managed beekeepers' colonies to pollinate. So um, the apiary program works to educate, and we've had some, some great opportunities this year to partner with UH and have a new teaching and demonstration apiary on Maui. So I'd like to thank them for coming and working with us. Um, and of course, bees are important for the beekeepers because they produce honey. Many people think of bees collapsing and think, well, we have sugar, we don't need honey. But really, um, that honey is very important. We have the president of the Hawaii State Beekeepers Association here today, and his livelihood depends on honey and those products of the hive. And that's an important thing for many beekeepers. There's also the, um, the queen bee production, which is, that is critical for all of North America. Many people are surprised that as colonies collapse, in North America, the way that those beekeepers can sustain their practices is by dividing the colonies they have left and putting a queen in that new half and rebuilding. And many, many, almost most of the queens that they need to do that come from Hawaii because we can rear them year round. So supporting that industry as we have this storm of parasites introduced is, has been a big part of our work and it's been very successful and they're learning to manage and not losing step and we're actually creating new producers which is really great and lastly the most important thing that these do for us is pollination and the value of hawaii's food crops every year that are pollinated by bees is over 200 million dollars that's an estimate but it's a much more critical resource to all of us it's not about whether you like honey or not it's about whether you want to eat every day so, you want to repeat that? <laughs> yeah. It's not about whether you like honey or not, it's about whether you want to eat. It's really important. The bees pollinate our crops, they are part of our food chain, and since 2007, we've started to raise awareness and, and support Pollinator Week. So I would like to acknowledge the people that have come uh, together to make this happen. Another important event for the Apiary Program is it was created over three years ago on soft funds. We were on grants. And since that time, we've been working hard, and this year is a landmark year for us because the program was installed into the Department of Agriculture on the general budget. So now we're here to stay, and I know there are many legislators that work to support that, and I'm very grateful to you for supporting the apiary program. And the Department of Agriculture has been very supportive of my work, um, UH Manoa, and uh, I would like to invite all of you to take a jar of the bees bounty with you as you go. So we brought a, a few of these jars for all of us that helped us get here. So thank you very much and uh, 
Thank you, Governor. Isn't she great? So now it's time to take some pictures.